let's interrogate your fetish with college. <laughs> where, where did you go to college, Steve? Uh, I, w I went to Brown. You went to Brown, Brown University. Yeah. Do you think that was a consequential decision in your life? Yeah, it really was. Uh, did you I, know that at the time? Um, I felt that it was, I, it was where I wanted to go to school. I had learned a little bit about it from friends who had gone there before me. Um, I was bizarrely drawn to this program called the semiotics program that I ended up majoring in, mm -hmm. um, which caused my parents no, no shortage of alarm that they were spending all this money to educate me in something, that, a word that they'd never heard, semiotics. They were like, is that the study of how plants grow in light? Like, what, is, what, what are you studying there? Um, and which it was basically like a media studies kind of program. Um, but yeah, I did, I felt like I did get quite a bit out of it. And it was, it was looking back, it was a good choice and it was a ch good choice for the reasons that I thought it was going to be a good choice when I was 17. But I'm probably, maybe I'm unusual in that, in that way. But look, I think you're right in the sense that there is, there, there's a huge amount of uncertainty with a decision like that. And there's a huge amount of uncertainty in any kind of choice that has long-term consequences, right? Because the future is really unpredictable. Yeah. So the question is not like, how can you have absolute certainty about the consequences of this choice? Um, part of the question is, it, I think it's important to acknowledge the uncertainty, right? It's important to like recognize the parts of your vision that are, are not clear, um, where it is unpredictable, and then look at the parts of the, of the choice that are more predictable and, and separate those two things out. That's one of the things that happened to try and bring it back. In the Bin Laden raid, they spent a lot of time trying to evaluate their certainty levels in trying to make this decision. Um, and that process of recognizing where your kind of field of vision is blurry and where your field of vision is more accurate, it doesn't give you, there, there, there's no way of reducing the complexity of a choice like that down to 100% you know, accuracy. But can you slightly improve your odds, meaning, meaningfully improve your odds in, in producing a better outcome? That's what I think the, the book is trying to argue. Yeah. Are, are there a class of decisions where approaching the decision systematically will lead to a worse outcome? Well, I think you talk about them a lot in Blink, right? I mean, I think one of the things that, that you know, the books kind of complement each other, even though they're looking at it from different angles, there are, um, there are situations where time is of the essence, where overthinking it can be a serious problem. And then there are a number of cases, um, what's the thing in Blink about the, um, is this person having a heart attack algorithm that you talk about, um, where instead of looking at a huge amount of data, there are these three questions that you ask of the patient, and, and that's the simplest way to figure out if they're having a heart attack, because it's a time-sensitive question. Those are situations, though, where the, the calculation um, and the algorithm for making the choice has been kind of pre-computed. Like people have looked at endless studies of how to detect a heart attack, and so you can condense down because of all those kind of earlier simulations of the choice that have happened with other people having a heart attack or not having a heart attack. You can condense it down into a much simpler algorithm. Um, but those kinds of situations, yes, you, you want to avoid the kind of information overload of, of thinking too much about it. And I think, by the way, what I try and argue in the book is that there are these distinct phases that you want to have in a decision process. And those phases should be finite. Like, this should not be an excuse to just mull a decision for, you know, a, a year or two, right? You should go through an initial phase where you map all the different alternatives and then a phase where you predict what the outcomes might be and then a, and a phase when you finally decide. So those should be finite in length. It's not something, it's not an excuse to just ruminate forever.